ahead of schedule. I was going to be before the uh, reception, so that's probably good. For, I don't know if it's good for you or for me. I don't know. Just going to give you a brief overview of the Cross Innovation Project, which is a policy project which was run through our university um, through a thing uh, uh, to, according to like Europe to looking at how we're going to work around policy making in the EU, around how we can look at better ways of connecting uh, the creative economy to other growth sectors. So we had a, a working definition because we're thinking, well, what is cross innovation? So we, this is our working definition. We said it's um, a, a process by which creative industries share information, collaborate and work with other sectors to generate new thinking. So it's quite, an, it's quite a bold statement. And it's about this notion of uh, sectors, if you like, in silos, and seeing where that cross-sectoral work in our local economy might actually uh, feature, and what types of crossovers might, might be happening. So I'll tell you a little bit about the partnership firstly, because it was funded through Interreg. Um, and we had 2.3 million, not, we didn't have 2.3 million euros across 10 cities, uh, but uh, BCU led this. And as you can see, December 2014, we're coming to, it's actually the end of the project. So, methodology and tools, what did we do? So we looked at this thing about cross-innovation, what did we do and what tools did we use? So, just to give you a brief overview there, some of the things we did. We, we did a heat map, and I'll show you that in a minute, because that was a really effective way of getting started on this. Um, we set up uh, 11 in implementation groups in the city. So each city had to see where, where is the cross-innovation hotspots for them, and they had to do a report, which I think is very important in these things, because otherwise it can drift, and people, people lose focus. So they each produced a report. We did a manifesto, we did a brochure and a toolkit, and that's on our website. And we commissioned two academic studies on this, again, it's on our website, uh, around internationalisation, where this was in 2012. We did the typical, lots of study visits, and we did some policy clinics, and I'll show you that, because that was an innovation for us. Rather than just listening, the policy clinic was a way of actually exploring this with, with colleagues from other cities. And we did a lot of SME internationalisation, which I'm just going to touch on in this, in this presentation now. I'm not going to go through what the heat the actual detail of the heat map, but you can see on the top were the, uh, the creative sectors and on the vertical were some of the so-called you know, traditional sectors. We could see where some of the hot spots were and where we could start looking. Uh, so for that, you can, this is across the whole partnership. And you can see qu quite quickly like mobile and environment and agency, uh, healthcare was very high, um, manufacturing and design were very high. So you can see it's a good tool to get that discussion so each city could then prioritise what it was going to do. Um, policy clinic approach, just briefly, was again, rather than talking at people, it was a kind of way of trying to involve them in planning on what was important for them. So we did um, a lot of work on study visits, people came back. Um, we did a policy canvas uh, which people could write on and put lots of nice sticky notes on what was important for them. And it was trying to say, well, you know, in the sectors, which sectors were really important, rather than only the policy makers, but actually looking at the, the SMEs and some of the intermediary bodies. So we basically co-developed what was important in each city. And then we tested that later in the local groups. So I think the policy clinic methodology was a, a good output, output for us on this project. So to give you an example, because this cross-innovation sounds great, but that, I'll just give you one example. There's 44 on the website. But that's one, uh, quite an academic one actually, from Tallinn, which was uh, it's a basically it's a website where you can d uh, choose your own clothes fitting, and it was developed with quite a lot of academic input from Tartu University, Technology University, and it's a German company as well. So there's this whole notion of coming together and developing new things. There's 44 on the website of that. So what we found out, we think that's the website reference, crossinnovation.eu, and it's got all of this on. Um, so I'll show you that, because I thought I'd be on the last one on. Creative does work. <laughs> that's probably quite a, that's Jeremy Della, uh, if you like. It's William Morris throwing the, the yacht into the lagoon, the Abramovich yacht into the lagoon. So that's a bit kind of a, that's a bit, possibly a bit too, uh, 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 should we say, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? 
explosive uh, 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 way of doing it. But, um, but it was good. We did see that creative industries do act as a catalyst. So uh, we also found that by doing the policy clinics, demand-led innovation at the city level worked as well. So there's a lot of uh, good crossovers going on at the city level. Um, we found, this is about cities really, um, so I should preface this with a thing about cities because it was all about city development. So we found what the researchers did, uh, we had a company called Multiplicities who did this report again on the website. They found there were three types, place-based for cross innovation, um, ones that had manufacturing orientation, and spaces that were new, what they called new coalition approaches, in other words, not just creatives working for manufacturers, but actually working with them. So co-creating ideas, because this notion of the creative economy as, as if you like, being utilised uh, by other growth sectors is one way. This is much more co-developing. And uh, Berlin was seen as a city like this, as was Birmingham. So we've got a lot, I think, to look at there. Um, not surprisingly, that's a picture of Digbeth, for those of you who know it, around the back of the Parkside building. Um, yeah, ecosystems are critical, so you've got to have the right environment for cross-innovation. You can't just cross-innovate uh, in a vacuum. And you need a place where intersections happen. So, for example, our new campus should be a good catalyst for this type of work. And particularly the way that the whole faculty structure is going, interdisciplinary ways forward are the way forward and I think uh, that was well enhanced in our project and elsewhere. Um, yes, yeah, serendipity is great but you need people to broker this. That, academics are very good brokers actually but we did find there was a role for brokers and that can be people, uh, events like this and uh, places. So all ten cities said that was really important. Um, and we also found this whole notion, again, it's not new. I'm sure you're all aware of the challenge event has come, it's become really popular. So there was uh, you know, government agencies saying, we've got a problem, we want to bring together a whole range of people to kind of look at this problem and to come up with new solutions, rather than just saying it's a health community, we'll just talk to the health community, well, hang on, let's, let's creative individuals, people in logistics, people in digital. So, that was a creative hackettism thing that was done in a uh, Birmingham Open Media Centre, which is now opened on the back of New Street Station, for those of you who know those very salubrious spe spots, actually. They've now put in a whole new uh, open innovation space called Birmingham Open Media there. Um, and another thing, we found that the SMEs like working together, because uh, people sometimes think, oh, SMEs, they don't know, the management's weak, da-da-da. You know, they're entrepreneurial, but no, we found it was really good. Uh, they did like working together and there was no problem at all. That's a slot from, slide from Berlin, uh, Berlin looking at some of that uh, work going on. And then I'm almost concluding, so you're fine, time to time. I think it, uh, that was a session I attended um, again in terms of this is about policy. Uh, again, I just wanted to share with you, for those of you in the know, the ECIA is the European Creative Industries Alliance. It was tasked to see what is the latest trend, what will the European Union have to look at in terms of creativity. And they also said cross-innovation is a big thing. They called it spillovers. They said that's the next big thing. We don't want to look at cross uh, creative industries in pillars anymore. It's got how that interacts with other, other parts. And that was part of their major, uh, that was a, part, a major part of their the results. And they used our data to actually come up with that. So, lastly, next step. So we finished this, as you saw, December of 2014. Um, we think um, we want to do more of this. Um, we're certainly looking, I'm sorry about the acronyms, but the, the LEP, the, uh, the ESIF is the LEP strategy for our local enterprise. And we, uh, as a university, we're trying to do far more of this cross-innovation work. So things like ERDF and ESF should, should feature. Um, we're looking at another proposal for Interreg Europe in 2014 and again we're looking at colleagues who would like to work with us on that. Uh, we're doing an open innovation event called Interactivos. Some of you have well, got very much involved with that last year but it's open innovation. How you, it's again another challenge event, we're running that uh, 
in 2014, 20, sorry, 2015, and last but not least, Design for Europe. VCU is a project partner in Design for Europe, and again, that's looking at how you look at uh, regions in the, in the EU, how, it can, how they can better look at design. And again, a cross-innovation approach we think is a, is a key one. So hopefully I've given you a gallop through cross-innovation in 10 minutes. So that's me done.